Hey guys, I'm Daniel from Dolier Media and today I'm going to be talking about base excess. Now if that's something that you don't necessarily understand, then stick around to listen to more. If you do learn something from this video and you learn something that you didn't know about base excess, can you please share this video with someone else, see if they knew what it was? I know that's one of those things that's really hard to understand, yet it's so simple once you get to know it. So base excess. Base excess, the typical range is negative two to positive two. And when looking at an ABG, it's one of those numbers that you're like, whatever, I'm just gonna ignore it. It's kind of like the temperature. You don't really care about it. But what does it mean? So base excess is, is what tells you how far off your base is. Now your base is gonna be your bicarb. There are other base things in your blood to balance out the acidity of the CO2. But the most common one that's calculated and the one that we're kind of worried about is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is HCO3 minus, and the normal range is anywhere from 22 to 28. Some books say 23 to 26. It's in the mid 20s, that's kind of what you're looking for. Now, what happens when a patient has a base excess that let's say is negative 10, that means that normally the patient's bicarbonate is let's say 26. And if the base excess says negative 10, that means that it's gonna be reading 16. So all it tells you is how far off is the base excess or how much excess there is of base or a depletion of the base in the blood. I'll give you guys an example of why this is useful and when this can actually help you out in the field. So let's say a patient walks in with a history of COPD. Patient that has COPD, you're already expecting their CO2 to be in the 60-60 club. So this patient's looking a little bit drowsy, they're breathing a little bit of heavy, and you get a blood gas. Once you get the blood gas, the results are like this. 7.20, 64, 83, and bicarb is gonna be 26. And you look at the base excess and it's negative 10. So it's looking like respiratory failure. The only number that's out of whack here is gonna be the CO2 level. So if you're just looking at this without knowing what's going on and what base excess is, you're gonna be like, okay, it's clearly a CO2 problem. So let's put them on a BiPAP, blow off that CO2 and see what we can do to get them better. But what the negative 10 base excess tells us is that they're normally probably sitting in the 30s to 40s range which means that they're actually having a metabolic issue. So because they're having a metabolic issue, putting them on a BiPAP or putting them on a ventilator or anything like that is not gonna fix the problem. Getting that CO2 level down is only gonna actually make things worse because once they stabilize with everything else, they're just gonna be super alkalotic. So in this situation, you gotta address what's really going on, which is something metabolic most likely the kidneys, most likely something else that's in the body, but it's not a respiratory issue. So keep an eye on them, but don't be too concerned. Now let's take the opposite example of this. It's also gonna be a COPD patient because COPD people are pretty much the only ones you're kind of worried about the base excess for, at least as an RT. And the patient's blood gas comes back very similar, 7.23, 64, 81, and 26 with the base excess of plus one. Now looking at that CO2 level and knowing that they have a diagnosis of COPD, you're thinking to yourself, it's fine, they're in a 60-60 club, this is probably not what's going on. But looking at that bicarb level, which is right around the right range, and looking at the base excess, it's telling you that they didn't lose any of the bicarb, that they normally are sitting in this range, so this is strictly a CO2 problem. So having that base excess gives you an extra little tool to see what else is going on with your patients. Let me know if this clears things up. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.